Hello guys, Bingo Cat here, and today I'm back with another operating systems comparison video. So I'm using VMware Workstation once again to compare two operating systems. So today I'm doing Windows 7 Professional 64-bit versus Windows 8.1 Professional 64-bit. Now, I specifically got asked to make a video regarding Windows 8 comparing Windows to Windows 7, so that's what I'm doing in this video. Now, the reason I'm using Windows 8.1 and not Windows 8 is because Windows 8.1 is a free update to Windows 8 so I don't see why you wouldn't use Windows 8.1 and ironed out a lot of the ironed out a lot of the kinks that Windows 8 has so yeah let's go ahead and turn both virtual machines on and see which boots faster now in theory Windows 8.1 should boot faster because starting with Windows 8 Microsoft introduced a new technology called fast boot and that has been carried over to Windows 10 as well so the technology, while well, it lies in the name, and supposed to make Windows boot up much faster than past versions of Windows. And as you guys could see by that test, even though I started up the Windows 7 virtual machine first, Windows 8.1 actually won the boot race. So yeah, let's go ahead and log into both operating systems. Alright guys, as you can see, both operating systems have booted up to the desktop. Now I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history behind both Windows 7 and 8.1. Now Windows 7 was designed as an incremental update to Windows Vista, right? After the negative speculation and negative press and bad user experiences, after Windows Vista was released regarding, you know, regarding drivers or regarding stability, all those bad impressions that most people had of Windows Vista and bad user experiences, Microsoft decided to focus on making Windows 7 just an incremental update, which this means is Microsoft mainly for Windows 7 worked on performance improvements and stability fixes to basically Windows 7 was Windows Vista 2.0, okay? So the user interface for the most part looks the exact same as Windows Vista. There's only a couple big major feature changes, like for example, the taskbar that we know and love evolved into its modern version in Windows 7. Windows 8, on the other hand, was designed with an entirely different mindset in mind than Windows 7. Windows 8 was designed to basically as a response to Apple's successful iPhone and iPad lineup and the growing world of mobile devices. Microsoft designed Windows 7 with traditional desktop PCs and laptop PCs in mind. They did not design it with a touchscreen interface in mind or the mobile world in mind like Windows 7. It does support touchscreens, but it was not designed for touchscreens. Like if you go into the start menu, you get this little super teeny tiny text to select that isn't really optimized for touch. Touch usually requires bigger icons or bigger text selections, which Windows 7 doesn't really have either, even with its quote unquote touch mode. Windows 8, on the other hand, was designed with touch in mind. So what Microsoft decided to do instead of building a completely separate tablet slash mobile phone operating system was they decided to take their main operating system line and try and redesign it around the mobile world. And what came out of it was Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. So Microsoft released this brand new user interface that you're looking at right now, the start screen, aka the Metro user interface, aka the modern user interface, aka the universal Windows user interface, or I don't even know if there's an official name for it anymore, but Microsoft has gone through so many names for this that I don't know. But anyways, the goal with this was to make it tablet and mobile and touchscreen and whatever friendly, right? By default on Windows 8 and some build, builds of 8.1, it boots to the start screen, right? And so the entire goal with this user interface basically is apps run in full screen and they're basically as simple as possible, right? But the entire problem with this approach was besides not have the apps not having as many features as their desktop counterparts is well if you aren't on a touch screen computer it's really clunky and hard to use right like for example in the original builds of windows 8 like this feature didn't even get added until windows 8.1 there's no x button if you hovered your mouse over here if you wanted to close an app right they 
technically didn't close. What you had to do is you had to swipe up here and try and move the app to the side or something like that, or try and evoke the charms bar. And what that would do is it would allow you to go back to the start screen, or you could just press the Windows key on your keyboard. And voila, but but basically, as far as user interfaces go, it's so different from the traditional Windows interface. Now, Microsoft decided to recidify some of the concerns in Windows 8.1. Like, for example, they now allow you to boot to the desktop by default, a feature that was not present with the original Windows 8. Um, and another thing is they added, you know, the close buttons and minimize buttons up here to make it seem more like a traditional computer. But unfortunately, that was not enough for most people. And so Microsoft released Windows 10 only last year. And the entire goal of Windows 10 is basically to still have Windows touch screen and tablet friendly, but to appeal to desktop users at the exact same time. And honestly, a lot of people dislike Windows 10 for one reason or another. But if there's one thing I do think they did right with Windows 10 is that they managed to combine touch screen, the touch screen world and the traditional keyboard and mouse world fairly well. Now Windows 8, besides its uh, user interface disaster, it actually contained a lot of noticeable under the hood improvements like fast boot, secure boot, I do like it how Windows 8 has something called file history where if you want to back up your files what it basically does is every time you make a change to a file it will back it up. So you, let's say you have a document called like text or something like that, right? And you change it so it says text 2 in the document and then text 3 later. File history, what it does is it backs up a copy of each document so if you want to go back to a certain date you can actually restore that document back to how it was back then. Which is something I find pretty neat. Windows 8 also includes a new and improved task manager. When you hit end task in Windows 8, it actually ends the task, unlike in Windows 7 where it might hang for five more minutes. And that is something I like better about the Windows 8 task manager than the Windows 7 task manager, to be honest. Also in the Windows 8 task managers, you can manage your startup items right here. In Windows 7, if you wanted to manage your startup items, you have to go to MS Config, which is not obvious to the end user at all. It's not even obvious to uh, administrators. And you can manage your startup items there. But that is not as simple as just going to the task manager like in Windows 8, right? Also, one thing about Windows 8.1 that's a little bit different from Windows 7, Windows 7 for the most part has one place to control all your settings, the traditional Windows control panel. Well, Windows 8 on the other hand has a control panel and also has a settings app. Now I mentioned this in my Windows 10 videos, I do not like that approach. I mean, I do like it how they're trying to simplify the settings, but having your settings in two different spots, that's just confusing. Another thing I like about Windows 8.1 over Windows 7, by the way, is Windows 8 actually has a built-in antivirus called Windows Defender, and it's a full-fledged antivirus suite. Windows 7, on the other end, has something built-in called also Windows Defender, but despite the fact that the names are the exact same, and it looks like I have Windows Defender off, the Windows 7 one is not an antivirus program. It is an anti-spyware program, and so it does get rid of some forms of malware on your computer, but not all. It doesn't really detect viruses or worms or trojans or anything like that. Windows 8.1s, on the other hand, it's a jack-of-all-trades antivirus program. It does basically everything. Now, it is not the top rated antivirus. In fact, last time I checked, it's one of the lowest rated antiviruses, but at least Microsoft includes an antivirus in Windows 8.1. Windows 7, if you want a Microsoft antivirus, luckily there is one, but you have to download something called Microsoft Security Essentials, which is, I believe, what I actually have on here right now. But Microsoft might give you that nice little option to download it, right? But in my opinion, Security Essentials should have been included by default in the operating system. Like, I do not know why Microsoft didn't decide to include Security Essentials, but decided to include Windows Defender and Windows 7. I don't know, that just makes zero sense to me. Now, the other major change, Ape has an improved File Explorer with the ribbon 
interface that they stole from Microsoft Office. Windows 7 just has their traditional toolbars and menu bars and stuff like that. You can't even see this menu bar by default. By default, it is hidden. You have to turn it on manually if you want the full functions of File Explorer. Now, the Windows 8.1 File Explorer I do like a lot better. It is easier to get around in my opinion. And the shortcuts to various parts on your computer make more sense. Not libraries in Windows 7. It's hidden in Windows 8.1 but it's still there. But I don't know if I'm a big fan of libraries for the normal user because I think most normal users think this is what I thought the first time I used Windows 7 that the documents library is actually a documents folder. And so, you know, that's just, it's just like the My Documents folder of Windows XP, right? It's just a single folder that you can store your own personal documents in it. Turns out that's not what libraries do. Libraries basically takes your documents from a whole bunch of folders on your computer. Like Windows 7 by default uses your My Documents folder and Public Documents folder and allows you to view all of them in one spot. Now that would make a lot more sense, but Something else that's confusing is you can create files and you can save files in the documents library. So where does it go then? Does it go to the My Documents folder or does it go to the Public Documents folder? I think it goes to My Documents here. Let's actually check. But that is still confusing in its own way and not something I'm too big of a fan of. Now, but you can definitely turn that feature back on on Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 for that matter if you still want it. Windows 8.1 doesn't have any games or Windows 7 does come preloaded with games. Windows 8.1 though you can download games. Windows 7 came you know with staples that Windows have always had like Minesweeper, Solitaire, even Windows 10 comes with games. But Windows 8.1 doesn't have any games. Alright regarding basically everything else in the operating system is Program compatibility for both operating systems is basically the exact same, like it can run the latest versions of Internet Explorer, of Google Chrome, of Office, of basically everything. If you can run it in Windows 7, you can run it in Windows 8, and if you can run it in Windows 8, you can basically run it in Windows 7. Support for Windows 7 will end in 2020, extended support started in 2015 after mainstream support ended that year. Windows 8.1's extended support will start in 2018. It's still on its mainstream support phase. Now, mainstream support and extended support, by the way, are two completely different support phases. What happens in mainstream support, right, is that Microsoft is pretty much guaranteed to release new Windows features for your version of Windows or provide tech support and also you get security updates and stuff like that, right? Extended support, on the other hand, you basically only get security updates for free. If you want new features or if you want tech support, you have to pay up money for it. Now, despite the fact that Windows 7 was released a whole three years before Windows 8 and a whole four years before Windows 8.1, Windows 7 is by far a more popular operating system due to the, in my opinion, superior user interface it has over Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. According to netmarketshare.com, Windows 7 at this time of recording has a 47.01% desktop operating system share. Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, when you combine their share together, it only has about 9.8% operating system share. Just for reference, Windows XP has 10.34%, where Windows 10 has 21.13%. Windows XP is a 15-year-old operating system now, and it has a higher install base than Windows 8 and 8.1 has. A 15-year-old operating system. Windows 10, on the other hand, was only released a year ago and its install base is already higher than Windows 8. Now, no doubt that a lot of the Windows 8.1 and 8 users jumped to Windows 10 as soon as the free upgrade was available. Windows 7, on the other hand, is the current go-to operating system for most businesses. And a lot of people who use Windows 7 did not want to upgrade to Windows 10 because it's just simply different. It is, to them, it's different in either a good way or a bad way. I'm not going to inject my personal opinion into that, but 
Long story short, a lot of people are still sticking with Windows 7. And that was today's video, guys. I hope you guys liked this video. I will definitely, most likely, do a Windows 8.1 versus Windows 10 video in the future. And I also want to branch into some Linux videos in the future. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.